Okay. Welcome to the October meeting of the BBAA. Let's get started here. I don't really need to open this because uh, we're going to start with uh, George and give the vice president report. Let me get out of your way. All righty. Let's see. It's like John from Prozac. Oh, no, not Prozac. You got to be sure and share it once once you get it. Yes, I got to log in. I usually have my computer do this for me automatically. I hope I know what my password is. If you don't, you should be able to just go to the our club and look at the so calendar. You won't be able to see all the details you normally yeah, do. No. That just didn't work. Oh, uh, phooey. I don't know what my password is. Let's, let's go, uh, go back here. Yeah, that one. And then uh, it doesn't pull up. I, I should have done this. You can find out up here. No. Not too early. 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 Okay. Yeah. You can use the um, mouse wheel, control mouse wheel forward, make it zoom in. Is good? Wait a minute, I've got to uh, share the screen somewhere else. Are you? Share, that's right. Uh, is it? <laughs> oh, that's it. No, no, no. Uh, you got to make it zoom in, though. There you go. See if you can zoom in now. No. Use control. control. Control mouse wheel control. forward. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. okay. Well, that looks pretty good too. Look behind you, George. It looks good. Okay. Me and my uh, uh, technology here. Okay. Today is the seventh. Our club meeting is tonight, of course. Tomorrow night is Corn Watch. Also, we have a Nature Bus Star Party tomorrow night. I will be meeting the Nature Bus at REI at Pembroke uh, uh, Shopping Center. I'll be riding on out to Cornland Park, and there'll be about uh, a dozen and a half people to look at the moon. All right. Are you canceling that already? It's supposed to rain tomorrow. Oh, that's right. That we do have a a backup plan. Okay. For next month. Okay. If it doesn't work tomorrow, we're going to do it on the 12th of November. I think they are calling for rain tomorrow. Night. Yeah, you're right. I, I need to touch base with the uh, major bus people. Okay, Saturday, weather permitting, is night watch at Chipokes Plantation State Park. Uh, next Tuesday at 7 30 is Garden Stars at North Northrop Botanical Garden. On Thursday, I'm, I'm sorry, Friday is another, uh, our special event, which we're, which we're going to be talking about tonight. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is International Observe the Moon Nights. Usually it's one night. This, this year it's three nights. We'll be at uh, downtown, uh, Norfolk near ODU, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Okay, on on to the 23rd, Saturday the 23rd is Saturday, Sunday. We've had a little bit of activity on the sun lately, some sunspots and some prominences. On the 26th, we have a Cub Scout pack event. And that does it pretty much for the month of October. All right, going to November. Club meeting is on the 4th, which is the first Thursday. Friday, the 5th is Corn Watch at Cornland Park. 
night watch at Tocos Plantation State Park, Saturday and all night, Saturday to Sunday. And it doesn't show up here, but the backup date for the nature bus is right here, the 12th or the 13th. Um, going on to Saturday, Sunday on November the 20th. Thanksgiving is the 25th. Corn watch is on the 26th. Sky watch is on the 27th. And that does it for the month of November. And in December, our first Thursday is the 2nd of December, club meeting, corn watch and night watch, which is canceled for December. There will be no scheduled night watch for December. Are there any questions? Is, uh, what did you talk about that December event? We go for one more month. One more month. Oh, yes, our luncheon. Is all, is all that official dates now that you have there? Because you moved some stuff around. Did we have to get a hold of the city of Chesapeake for any of that? Mm -hmm. Did you move Skywatch? Uh, we wanted to move Skywatch? That was in February. Yeah, we oh. got that. This is taken care of. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And uh, in December, if you're thinking that far ahead on the 10th, uh, so far the Ghent market shops have us coming out from 6 to 10 or 11. That might actually be good in the summer. Yeah. Better and, than the uh, summer when we went. And our BBA annual anniversary luncheon is scheduled for Saturday the 11th of December. Okay. Any questions? Are you on Zoom with a question? All right. I'll stop sharing. Now what do I do? <laughs> That's it. Thank you, George. All right, next up we have the secretary report with uh, Jeff. I see him online here. Hello, can you hear me? I can hear can you. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, yeah, uh, secretary report. Um, uh, the minutes, minutes have been posted onto BBAA website. Uh, I'll get you over here and take a look. But anyway, do you want me to read them off or are we good? Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Looks like you're out of it. Okay. I've had a personal bout of uh, breakthrough COVID-19, even though I've had three vaccines, it still is um, rare in its ugly head. So just be careful out there. I did get a call from Virginia Board of Health today. And by this weekend, I'll be clear. So. Hopefully, I'll be back into things uh, next week. Sounds good. I'm glad you're doing better. Thanks. I don't see Rich online, so he might join later, though. We'll come back to him if he does for the Treasury report. So, next up, we have Ben. Is there anything for us, Ben? There you go. I was like, where are you? <laughs> I'm behind Jeff. I'll let you know next week. Okay. No scholarship. Well, actually, we need to see what the Treasury's report looks like for money. Oh, wow. Rich will probably join later. He's, he's been in all the other meetings, so he might just be late. Yeah, once we get guidance on what's available for the fund. Okay. 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 I'll get the team together and then we'll send the scholarships out. And we don't usually put it out until like January, February, anyway. So the closing date is in May. Oh, yeah. We'll have two scholarships. Typically, thousand, five hundred, fifteen hundred, and a thousand. So, very generous for our size organization. And congratulations, Thank growing. All right, thank you. Okay, next up we have a uh, Alcorn report from Bruce Powers via me, because Bruce is at a uh, San River uh, Star Party, but he gave me some notes already. So he wanted me to pass out that uh, he mailed the BBA award to the virtual convention for the Astronomical League. It was a door prize, a three volume set of Burnham's Celestial Handbook. It was a $210 value. And he wanted to thank Rich Roberts for coordinating the payments so quickly. Let's see. 
The Astronomical League now has an extensive YouTube channel. He recommends it to club members looking for overviews of how particular AL observing programs work. Each overview is about an hour in length and is moderated by AL experts for a given program. He reviewed the AL YouTube channel for the Globular Cluster Observing Program and as a result ordered the manual for this program to start on October 2021. And to simplify AL Observing Program log submissions for award pins, he's recommending club members forward all logs once a complete for an award directly to the program coordinator's mailing address listed on the AL website. Submitting award materials to the local coordinator, which is him, has been done in the past. The AL gives member clubs the option of sending materials to the outdoor first or sending directly to the Astronomical League coordinators at the, for the particular program. All logs must eventually be forwarded to the AL for program awards. For junior members or children going through Alcor may be called for, but for adult members who are professional, sending material directly to the AL is the preferred method to speed up the award recipient for the member, receipt for the member. Let's see, all mailing addresses for the program corners can be easily found on the AL website. And if you have questions, let them know. And he said, when he gets back, he'll let us know about the Stan River Star Park. Let's see. Next up, we have the Triple RT report. And I don't see Bird, but I did log into the website today, and the telescope is up. The dome is closed because it's not very good weather, but it's working. So if you wanted to take pictures with that telescope and you don't have an account, let one of the officers know, and we'll direct you on how to get that done. Let's see, old business. I don't have any old business. Does anybody else have any old business? I guess that's enough. New business. I've got something for new business. I make motion that we make Chuck Dibbs a lifetime honorary member of the BBAA. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Wait, what was that? I'm sorry. <laughs> Chuck Dibbs is the director of the planetarium for Virginia Beach City Public Schools. I suggest, and he's, he's worked with us very closely for years. I suggest we make him a, a lifetime honorary member of the club. And the motion passed. Did you hear that, Jeff? He's muted. Yes, I heard that. Very good. All right. This, that's important stuff for you to take down. <laughs> Anybody else have new business? I have a couple of things. Or one thing, actually. If no one else is. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I say something? Sure. Um, so next Friday at Lincoln University, uh, there's going to be, it's called Silent Sky. And it's uh, by Lauren Gunderson, 1908. One in a group of women computers at Harvard Observatory crunch numbers for its female astronomers, but it's about a woman who charts a map to the Milky Way that will forever change the way we see the universe. Um, and it's a true story. It's going to be October 14th through the 17th at Regent University, and it's called Silent Sky. Very good. Very cool. That's outstanding. They uh, did that at the Little Theater of Virginia Beach two years ago, and we had we set up telescopes in the parking lot for them out when they came out of the show. I remember that. Okay, my new business is the prize for the Georgia June raffle. Thank you, sharing it yet. You're right on that. There you go. Don't quit, yeah. Okay, you guys can see that at home. They're all muted. Here's the yes, I can see it. Thank you, Jeff. Um, this year, I suggested a, I don't know, three months ago about 
something I made for my house to use. It's called a magic mirror. And I have a video of it working at my house. It it, it's like an interactive whiteboard that displays astronomical information and my wife and I's calendar. So this is how she knows I'm going to be out of the house at an astronomy event. So you see like in the middle there, it's just playing upcoming rocket launches and then it's got like the boardwalk astronomy event coming up. This was taken back in August. It's a uh, live video from the ISS, like the current moon uh, asteroid is passing by the earth. So it has like weather information and it rotates these things. I can make something like this, the current uh, SDO imagery from the NASA. If you guys want to do something like this, or we go with the telescope, but we need to decide on a raffle prize. What, what is this? I don't understand what that is. This is a screen share of a monitor that's hanging on my wall okay. in my house. Okay. You can, uh, so is a Wi Fi base it picks up, or what is that? It, you have to, you know. Well, you can. Uh, Plug a Ethernet cable into it too. It's a Raspberry Pi. I was going to say it's a Raspberry Pi. It's, it's a Raspberry Pi. It'll operate off a TV and get a separate monitor. I have a monitor and hang it on the wall in our kitchen. You could have it or it plugs into an HDMI uh, input on your TV and you just switch input and see what's going on and switch it back. So this is a monitor itself. This is a monitor. With that it's stuff built in. Vertical display. That's why it looks like that. Oh, okay. Okay. I, all I did was screen record what I have running in my house. So you can see what it's doing, essentially. And I can make something like this. We could do like a telescope again, if you guys wanted to do. Does that come with good directions for somebody who doesn't, is not that technical? Well, I would help you set it up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is it, do you need to know how to do something in a configuration file? Yes. But once it's running, I haven't messed with it since, you know. But if you guys want, I brought this up before. We're, we're, and really, if we don't want, if you guys don't think this is good, we can go with the telescope eyepiece, but something, it's October. And we usually are already selling the raffle tickets. This is how we fund the Georgia June thing. Though. What, what's the usual price range that we? This is inexpensive compared to the normal thing. This is about maybe a hundred dollars for the Raspberry Pi and the accessory boards for it. But we usually go about three. Is that like three, three fifty for a telescope? I like that idea. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to buy one for my observatory, please. So like send me the bill. <laughs> I'm serious. But is this what you guys want to do for a prize? Yes. Okay. And the and I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it. <laughs> That's easy that we don't have to then decide. And like I said, you can make it on my at my house. This whole thing is only doing astronomy, but every five minutes it restarts and opens up like my wife's calendar. So and mine. And it just swaps them back and forth. So you can see you can do a whole bunch of stuff, but it'll like it'll display uh airport data. So you know if your flight's gonna be delayed, things like that. You can do a whole bunch of things. There's about I don't know, two, three hundred modules you can load onto this thing. So, but I will show you how to set it up, or I'll do the basic thing if you want, and you guys can just leave it be and never screw with it again. It's up to you. Cool. All right. So, all in favor of doing this then? Yes. That's what we'll do. Any other uh, new business? I think next uh, we have uh, observing reports. Yep. This is the only thing I had for new business. Do we have any observing reports? Nobody. Last Saturday, Skywatch was a very good success. We had about four dozen visitors. We had eight or 10 telescopes. I think we had 10 telescopes and the skies were clear all night. We even saw two bright meteors. Yes. as well as a pass of the International Space Station. I've never seen a meteor linger like that. George and I saw it for 15, 20 seconds after it was gone. It was still luminescence in the sky. It was crazy. I usually relate those to basically space junk coming up, but it's usually slower. It might have been. Yeah, I'm it, not sure what it was. It was, it was, it was coming from... It was around the time of the Draconid 
meteor shower, so I'm not sure if it was part of that or not. This is the best one I've ever seen. I know that. <laughs> Anybody else have any observing reports? Yeah, I spent a couple of nights uh, imaging. Very nice. Anyone else? Wish I was observing the stock there with a clear sky. <laughs> I have not heard good results from people who've been there. I heard my like, backyard. They were talking about that Saturday at Statwatch. Actually, how the forecast didn't look very favorable. He had said he had a couple good nights. <laughs> well, hopefully, we'll get lucky with at least one good night. Sue said he had a good night Monday night for about four hours. That's the only report I heard. Right on. Anybody else who had any observer reports? Sean, I've been uh, observing uh, M33 China and Galaxy. That's uh, been pretty good lately. And, um, you know, I mean, there's a bunch of them up there right now. You know, Andromeda's out there. You can see, I mean, they're just right there. Uh, Pleiades, um, it's pretty much all around the same time, pretty much uh, for me. Um, 1030 to about uh, 1230 from my house in my backyard. But uh, I did catch one. Uh, I haven't really worked on before. It's uh, called Ghost of Cassiopeia. Uh, I've never seen that before, but I'm uh, working on the process of that one right now. I think Gabriel showed us that when we were at Skywatch. Gabriel showed us a lot of things, including uh, M33. It was faint fuzzy in his scope, not, nothing like uh, Eddie's picture of it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to give a shout out to Gabriel. That, He's that a, guy is how he, is, he impressed Kent. Like he, not this last guy I watched, but the one before that, I was set up near him and Kent. And we all had a Ryan 10 inch, so we called it a Ryan Belt. It's pretty cool. But uh, <laughs> he spent like an hour and he went from a star birth to death with a group of people, like intricate detail. You know, I mean, he just swinging that scope, we must have looked at 20 things at least. In that hour, and he had this group. They didn't leave the whole time. I mean, it was good, real good. That's when I took that photo that was on the Night Sky Network mm -hmm. because he was so impressive. I was like, I didn't have to show anybody anything. He had the whole group around. It was cool, very cool. Let's see. Anybody else have anything? Because if not, we're going to roll into the presentation. Uh, yeah. Am I still sure? Yeah. All right, well, if we don't have any other observer reports, I'm going to turn it over to George. He's going to give a presentation in preparation for International Observe the Moon night. And technically, the night is on the 16th, but they're pretty lax about having two week window around that date. What I've seen, so I'm gonna let Jordan have that set up here. And it looks like you're still sharing. My quick stop share. Yeah. And we're gonna have to set up the computer to get the presentation. To uh, Starling, it's a bridge point. Share the whole share this for the first time. Forward. 
Okay. All right, here we go. <clears throat> now, we amateur astronomers often consider the moon to be light pollution when we're trying to find deep sky objects because those are elusive, faint, fuzzy things that need a dark sky to be seen. And the moon lights up the sky, making it harder to see those DSOs. Now, when I started out in astronomy 21 years ago, I got frustrated when I could not see the faint Messier objects. So I chose to observe something I could see, the moon. And a very, very satisfying experience it was. In fact, I don't know if you can see this. This is the certificate I got. Oh, they, they can't see it. Oh, they can't see it. I'm sure it changed. Never mind. Uh, I got a certificate for the Lunar Award. And uh, I earned the Astronomical League's Lunar Observing Award for observing and logging 100 objects, 100 features on the moon using the unaided eye, binoculars, and telescopes. More recently, I've once again had a hard time seeing deep, dim deep sky objects, and I realized I need cataract surgery on my eyes. So I reverted to observing the moon once again. I earned the Lunar 2 Award, and in front of, on the desk up here, I've got my log book and some of the sketches I made. And I invite you to come up after the presentation and look at some of those things. But that's another 100 objects observing features on the moon and sketching some of them. And I highly recommend that you get acquainted with Luna, our Earth's only natural satellite. It's fun to observe, and it's also easy. It's gratifying when you become familiar with the craters and the mountain ranges and the seas on the moon. Has anyone here spent any time observing the moon? Good, good. Any, uh, any comments about your moon observing? I went to Vegas, but I wasn't able to um, participate in the moon march. But what I noticed is that when it was lower in the sky from Vegas, it was red. And then when it went higher up, but I think it could be from the fires. No, it's from the atmosphere. When you're looking through more of the atmosphere, it colors the uh, the moon. Ben? Yeah, um, what's amazing when you do the, the lunar certificate program, and then you get into it, is make sure you get a book to go along because some of the details are so fine and, and very rewarding when you find them because of the phases and the shadows and the angles and the cliffs and the ridges and stuff. It's absolutely an astonishing moment when you pick them off at the right time with the right supporting documents. Yes, those of you, those of you who are here in the room after the presentation, look at this bank of resources on the table in front of you. Those are books and charts and things that I used for observing the moon, and you can learn a lot about the moon that way. Well, next weekend is a big international Observe the Moon Night activity spanning three nights, the 15th, 16th, and 17th of October. IOMN is usually a one-night affair, but on a Saturday night, but this year we'll team up with Skywatchers Club, uh, Barry Art Museum, ODU's Planetarium people, and the Girl Scouts, and uh, we'll have a three-day IOMN event. So tonight, I would like to give you a taste of moon observing to prepare us for IOMN, to allow us to be more knowledgeable and more intelligently show the moon to the public next weekend. You have some handout materials you can use to learn your way around the moon. And feel free to duplicate these sheets if you wish to use for your own outreach or personal use. So let's dive into our presentation for International Observe the Moon Night. Tonight we're going to prepare International Observe the Moon Night. Learn your way around the moon. It's also known as lunacy. Now, 
International, Absor is International Astronomical Union, the IAU, is the sole authority over changes and additions to lunar nomenclature. As of 2000, there have been 6,235 craters designated on the near side of the moon. 810 prominent craters have names and 5,425 are identified by letters added to the name of a nearby prominent crater. And some of the references I have are Atlas of the Moon by Antonine Ruppel, uh, edited by Gary Saronic, Objects in the Heavens, version six by Peter Beeren, the R Royal Astronomical Society of Canada's handbook, Observer's Handbook, and Sky and Telescope's Moon Map and Field Map of the Moon. Well, now this picture here, this is an awesome view of the moon that you'll never see in your telescope. This is a photo montage. Well, let me get a little bit closer here, a little bit. That's our moon, Luna. It's a pho photo montage. I say, look at it carefully. Do you see anything different? Well, this is a view you'll never see because this is a photo montage taken by NASA's Lunar Crater Observation and Sensing Satellite, or LCROSS, and Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, or LRO. A full, full moon will never show the detail re uh, revealed in this montage, which shows the details of the craters and mountains that are only possible to be seen during uh, several monthly phases of the moon as the terminator, the line of shadow between day and night on the moon, moves gradually across the surface once each month. So now let's have a little fun with the moon. Now, you see the man in the moon. It's sort of hard on a close-up, but when you're looking at the moon with your naked eye at the full moon, it's easier to see the man in the moon. Can you see it? How about now? There's the man in the moon, eyes, nose, mouth. Now my favorite is the woman in the moon. Can you see the woman in the moon? I can't look at the moon anymore without seeing the woman. I think she looks a little bit like Wilma Flintstone. Now this image does not show her like Wilma Flintstone, but her hair is made up of the seeds of tranquility, serenity, chrysium, and fecunditatis. And, uh, there she is. You see her now? Yeah. What was the man in the moon again? Man in the moon? Let's go back to the man in the moon. Oop, back. Oop, go on. There's the man in the moon. Eyes, two big eyes. Oh, okay, I see it. Nose, mouth. Yeah, I was looking closer. Okay, the woman. There she is again. How about the rabbit in the moon? You see that? Yes. Oh, he's a big rabbit. There he is. The rabbit in the moon. You got to use your imagination. Okay, oh, I should have mentioned on that woman in the moon. Let me look at that again. Her pearl necklace down under, uh, below her neck there, and that's uh, made up of the crater Tycho. And we'll see that in other slides. You can see it really clear here. Okay, now here's a little review for us astronomers. So you can explain it to visitors who may want to know about the Earth and the moon system. Let's see what causes the moon to have its phases. Well, it has to do with the fact that the moon revolves around the earth in 29 and a half days. It also rotates on its axis in 29 and a half days. And it's tidally locked. That means the same side always faces earth. So we can only see one side of the moon. Here's a little bit better picture. It shows the positions of the moon around the sun and what we see from our vantage point on Earth on the dark side of the Earth, when the moon is between us and the sun, we can't see it. If we, the far side of the moon is sometimes called the dark side of the moon, but it's not dark. 
because when it's a new moon, the far side of the moon is totally illuminated. As the moon goes around clockwise on this image, it becomes a waxing crescent. About seven days later, it's first quarter, or what some people call a half moon. A few days later, it's a waxing gibbous moon. About 14 days, four, day 14 or 15, it's a full moon. Then it goes to a waning gibbous. It starts getting smaller again, but it's lighted on the left side instead of the right. At about the 21 or 22 day mark, it's at the last quarter. It's illuminated a half moon on the left side. It goes to a waning crescent and back to new moon. Let's demonstrate that with this slide here. If you could observe the moon every day in its month long lunation cycle, this is what you would see. Starting from the bottom right and working right to left and up. Before day one and after day two, or after day nine is the new moon. Okay, here's day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day seven. It's about half moon, first quarter. Day eight, day nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It's about full. 15, it's also full moon. It goes 16, 17, 18, day 19, 20, 21. By day 22 or 23, it's a half moon again, only it's the last quarter moon. Then it goes to day 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. And then it goes back to new moon again, which I call day zero, which you will not see. Now the moon will look like this for International Observe the Moon Night. It's a waxing gibbous moon grad gradually getting fuller each night as more of the surface is illuminated. And the best time to observe the moon, as Ben mentioned, is, is when there is a terminator, a dividing line between light and dark, day and night on the moon. Then the craters and the mountains will stand out in relief almost three-dimensionally due to the shadows cast by the indirect rays of the sun. When the moon is full, there are no shadows due to the flat illumination of the sun's direct rays. And all you can see are the dark and the light areas. The light areas are called the highlands. The dark areas are lower. They're seas of lava. Our moon is fascinating. It's got those phases. Its orbit is very complex, believe it or not. We think of it as just going in a circle around the Earth. But as Earth goes around the sun, the moon is making spirals all the way around for a year is spiraling around and sometimes it's farther away at apogee, sometimes it's closer at perigee. It wobbles. We don't see just 50% of the moon. Sometimes it leans forward or leans back or leans to the left or leans to the right. So we can actually see over a period of liberation cycle about 63% of the moon's surface. It cycles, it's tides, causes the tides with its gravity on the Earth's oceans. When it comes into Earth's uh, shadow, we have a lunar eclipse, and there's going to be one in November. Uh, when it comes between Earth and the sun at the proper time, we have a solar eclipse. And there have been many exploration missions to the moon, both uh, manned and unmanned. So let's get serious about exploring the moon. Our moon's name is Luna. I mentioned it's the only natural satellite. And our ancient ancestors thought the moon was like the earth with seas of water and, and land. So they named the dark area seas, or in Latin, that's maria, which is the plural for sea. Mare is the singular for sea. So the seas. Most of the features on the moon were de uh, decreed by the International Astronomical Union to have Latin names. So I'll try to give you the Latin name as well as the common name. There are also mountain ranges on the moon, and the mountain ranges on the moon are named after mountain ranges on the Earth. So we're going to learn some of the Maria, the mountain ranges, and some of the major craters tonight. And if you were here about two years ago, this is similar to the uh, presentation I gave on the moon then. So the Maria, 
The seas on the moon are not seas of water, but lava, mostly basalt, that were formed in the early stages of the formation of the moon, impacting objects liquefied from the heat of impact and released hot lava from the molten core of the forming moon. When the lava cooled after many years, it filled in those huge craters in the low areas. The lighter colored areas on the moon are the highlands and are older as they have never been covered by that molten lava. Thus, most of the craters that we see from the early bombardment are seen in the highlands. More recent craters and fewer of them are found on the lowland seas. So let's see at the very top, Again, our, our ancestors thought uh, the North Pole, the moon was just as cold as the North Pole of the Earth. So Mari Fragoris, the sea of cold, the sea of cold was at the north end of the moon, north top of the moon. Mari Imbrium is the sea of rains. That's that big area right there. And highlighting one corner or one edge of the Sea of Rains is the Bay of Rainbows. It's called Sinus Iridum. The Mari Imbrium is the Sea of Rains. Sinus Iridum is the Bay of Rainbows. Sinus in Latin means bay. Iridum means rainbow. Mare Vaporum, the Sea of Vapors, is right there in the center. Mare Insularum, the Sea of Isles, I-S-L-E-S, Islands. And pay close attention because there's going to be quiz. Yeah, I hope you're writing these things down. Them. Jotting them down on your, <laughs> on your handouts there. Mari Cognitum, the known sea. Mari or Oceanus Procellarum, that big gray area on the left or the west side of the moon. The ocean of storms, Oceanus Procellarum. Now Mari Oriental, is sometimes you can sometimes see a glimpse of it when the moon's libration tilts it in our direction, but it's mostly on the far side of the moon. You can just see it once in a while. Mare Oriental, the uh, Oriental or Eastern Sea. Mare Humorum, the sea of moisture or humidity. Mare Nubium, the sea of clouds. Mare Nectaris, the sea of nectar. Mare Fecunditatis, the sea of fertility. Mare Tranquilitatis, the sea of uh, tranquility. This is where the uh, Apollo 11 astronauts landed. In fact, they landed almost exactly where that arrow is pointing. Mare Serenitatis, up to the uh, upper right of Tranquilitatis, the Sea of Serenity. And Mare Chrysium, the Sea of Chryses. There are, there are a few other smaller seas and uh, other features, but these are the major ones. Now some mountain ranges and a few of the more well-known craters. Um, I hope Hope that people can see this without because it's going to be obscured by this thing here. Yeah. I think you do minimize that. Huh? I think you can minimize that. Can I minimize that? You can move it. You can move that frame. Yeah, so hit that sign. You did. Right there. Yeah. Okay. There we go. Now you can be able to see the writing. The mountain ranges. Again, the uh, Latin term for mountain is monte, and mountains are called montes, montes alpes or the Alps Mountains. Again, they're up in the north there. And the Alpine Valley, there is, you can't see it very well on this uh, image, but you can see it very well with the telescope. It's right, uh, I can't, can't, I can't point to it. Well, maybe I can use a cursor. Can you see the cursor? Yeah. yeah. There's the Alpine Valley right there. And it shows up better when there's a terminator and the light shows uh, a shadow there. The Caucasus Mountains, and these uh, mountain ranges, a lot of them are just uh, ridges around those big seas. The Caucasus Mountains, they are along Mari, dividing between Mari Imbrium 
uh, the Sea of Rings and Mari Serenitatis, the Sea of Serenity. The Apennine Mountains or Montes Apenninus. The Carpathian Mountains are there above Crater Copernicus. And speaking of craters, we're going to talk about some famous craters and point them out. Crato, famous crater up to the north of Mari Imbrium. Archimedes, down to the lower right of Mari Imbrium. Aristarchus, a bright crater off to the west, northwest of Copernicus. And speaking of Copernicus, that's that big bright one right there with all the rays coming out of it. Those rays, by the way, are ejecta caused by the impact whenever something hit the moon and caused that crater. Kepler is another bright crater to the west of Copernicus. Grimaldi, it's that little dot way over there on the almost to the western limb of the moon. Gassendi is called a ruined crater. It's old and it's got a lot of impacts upon it. Gassendi crater. Crater Clavius is another old crater. It's down in the south and it's got a number of craterlets, a, a, a semicircle of craterlets descending in size within the floor of Clavius. Very interesting object to look at. And Tycho, this is this was the, the pearl necklace of the woman in the moon. When the moon is full, Tycho is very, very obvious. And the rays coming out from Tycho, there's one of them there. There's one of them goes all the way across the Sea of Serenity, went across Mare Nectaris, and up here. That was some impact. And there's Tycho. It's a very bright crater. So, and there are thousands of craters on the moon. Like I said, 6,200 of them and about 800 some have names. Most of them were named after famous scientists in history. Um, so let's look at some more craters. Oh, before I do that, there's a couple excellent feet references, like I mentioned before, Atlas of the Moon by Antonine Ruckel, published by Sky and Telescope, and Ernest, Ernest Charrington Jr.'s Exploring the Moon through Binoculars and Small Telescopes. These are ideal for finding those individual features on the moon during their different periods of lunation, because they have show pictures, well, Charrington shows pictures at each stage of lunation, and also, the uh, Objects in the Heavens by Peter Beren shows the moon every day of its lunation from one day one through 28. So but now let's look at some more craters. Okay, here's some uh, craters in the re uh, region of Mari Imbrium, the Sea of Rains, Aristillus, Nautilicus, Eratosthenes, down there near the bottom of Mari Imbrium. Reinhold is just below Copernicus, and Landsberg is just below Reinhold. I call that a set of craters. Then we have Grimaldi again sort of off by itself in the highlands, a little dark spot. Herbach, right near the center of the moon. Rigo Montanus. And uh, there is an interesting feature right about here called the Lunar X, formed by four craters. The walls of four craters can only be seen during a certain part of the lunation. I'll get to that in a little bit. Crater Walter, Crater Billy, Crater Bully Aldous, Crater Bailey, Shickard. It's a big crater, but it looks 
elongated because it's so close to the limb of the moon, then the same thing applies to Schiller. It's really more round, but it looks elongated. Now, these are all craters. That, these are all craters that, that these are all craters that you need to uh, find when you're doing the lunar observing award, either the lunar or the lunar two observing award. Now, some more craters on the other side. There's Aristotle or Aristoteles in Latin. Eudoxus, right below Aristoteles. You got Hercules and Atlas. And take away some of those lines so that they don't cross. Hercules is right there, and Atlas is right behind it. Right there. Atlas is a little bit bigger than Hercules. And then in the same region, a little bit lower, right on the limb or the edge of uh, Mari Serenitatis is Posidonius. And one of my favorites, so let's back again. One of my favorite triplets is Theophilus, Cyrillus, and Katharina. Right there, from the north to the south, Theophilus, Cyrillus, and Katharina. Fun to watch for. Then there's Langrinus on the east end of the moon, near uh, Mare Fecunditatis. Octavius, south of Langrinus. And another of my favorite triplets, Ptolemaeus, Alphonsus, and Arzakel, right there in the middle of the moon. That big fat one is Ptolemaeus, Alphonsus, and Arzakel. They got triplet of craters. And there's Marolycus. Longo Montanus, which is below uh, Patavius. Actually, no, it's, on, it's over by Schiller. And another reference that you can use to identify, identify some of the major features of the moon is the Observer's Handbook of the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. I call it the RASC Handbook. And uh, for those of you who are in this room, Unfortunately, other people will not see it. The Observer's Handbook. Got a section on the moon. And I just passed it here. And it's got a sketch of the moon and a, an image of the moon and numbered objects to identify. And we're going to see that what that looks like. Next slide uses that RASC sketch of the moon to identify many lunar features. Okay, and these features are numbered on the sketch, but they're listed alphabetically. So here we go. Albategnius, and it's going to be uh, sort of hard to do this. I guess I'll have to use the, the cursor. Albategnius. Right there in the middle. Alphonsus, as I mentioned, is part of Alphonsus. Ptolemaeus, Alphonsus, and Arzakel. That's Alphonsus. Number 23 is Arago. Let's see. I've... Where is 23? There it is. Arago is in uh, Sea of Tranquility. 24 is Archimedes. 25 is Aristarchus, 26 is Aristotelus, 27 is Aristoteles, 28 is Arzakel, down here, 29 is Atlas, up here, Autolycus is number 31, right here, 32 is Bessel in Sea of Serenity. Uh, 33 is Bullialdus down in the Sea of Clouds, Mare Nubium. Cassini, number 34, is right up here on the edge of Mare Nubium or uh, Mare Imbrium. 35 is Katharina down here at 
triplet I saw, showed you before, Theophilus, Cyrillus, and Katharina. 36 is Clavius down in the south. 37 is Cleomedes up north of Mare Crisium. 38 is Cook. I guess that was probably named after Captain Cook down here below Mare Fecunditatis. Copernicus, a big bright one. And that's number 39. Okay, number 41 is Cyrillus. 42 is De Lambre. 43 is Endymion, which is up here in the upper right, which is the northeast. Eratosthenes, which is 44, right here. Eudoxus, back up here. Fracastorius, south of Mare Nectaris. Fernarius, which is down almost on the limb in the southeast. Gassendi, which is that ruined crater over here, number 48. Grimaldi, over by itself, number 49. Halley, right there in the middle, just to the east of uh, Ptolemaeus and, and uh, Albategnius. Uh, 52 is Hercules up here in the northeast. Herschel is 53, right there in the center, just north of Ptolemaeus. Vivalius is number 54. And yeah, I know where that is somewhere. All right, where's Vivalius? Anybody see 54? There it is, way over to the left, way over to the west. There it is. Hipparchus is closer to the center, 55. Julius Caesar, 56. Kepler, over here, 57. Langrenus, down here, um, 58. And Landsberg, over here, 59. But we're not done yet. Hey, George. See, see if you can see them now. <laughs> Do you have any time frame in what any of those books were the first when I first started naming these things? Uh, you know, so no, I so don't have they, anything about the naming. Uh, just just how to observe them and, and find them. Okay, this is the moon. Take a look at that sketch again. It's overlapped with the actual picture of the moon. So if you can identify them on the sketch, you might be able to see them in real time there on the moon and what they really look like. So let's look at some more. Number 61. Well let's let's get the sketch back. Number 61, Longo Montanus. Uh, down where my cursor go? There it is. Longo Montanus, number 61. Macrobius over here to the east uh, or west of uh, Mare Crisium. Maginus, number 63, is south. I lost it. South. South. There it is. Maginus down there in the south. Manilius up here in Mare Vaporum or the Sea of Vapors. Uh, 65 is Mascaline. Right there in uh, Mari Tranquilitatis, the Sea of Tranquility. Marolycus is number 66. Marolycus. Yeah. And... There it is, 66. Oh, there it is, there it is, right there. 66, Marolycus. Mercenius, 67. Newcomb is 68. Newcomb is right up there. Newcomb 68, Tavius 69. Here's a like, like I like this one. Piccolomini. Piccolomini is number 71. Um, right there. At the end of that rill, that, that E is a rill. We'll see that in, in a little bit. 
Plato up there in the north, uh, number 60 or 72. Plinius, or named after Pliny the Elder, or the philosopher, <clears throat> 73. 74 is Posidonius. Posidonius is up to the northeast of Marius Serenitatis. Ptolemaeus, the big one right there in the middle, 75. Reinhold over here below uh, Copernicus. Ross, number 77, right there. Schickard, 78. Schiller, 79. For some reason they don't have uh, 80, they don't have numbers with zeros after them. So 81 is Snellius over here in the lower right. 82 is Stavinus or Stavinus. Eighty-three is Tarentius. <coughs> Where's Tarentius? Eighty-three, eighty-three. Where's ah? There it is, right there. Eighty-three is Tarentius. Eighty-four is Theophilus. Eighty-four, right, right, right there, right there. Oh, Theophilus, Cyrillus, and Catherina. Yeah, Theophilus. Eighty-four. Eighty-five is Timocharis. Eighty-six is Tycho. And 88 is Crater Wilhelm. And again, I'll bring the moon back. So you can try to identify those things without the sketch. This is Flavius down here. There's Tycho, so forth. Now I'm going to add the lunar X. The lunar X is right in here, and it's only visible. The transient optical feature on the moon that occurs for about four hours in your first quarter phase of the moon. Because Earth is not always in the same place when the moon is in this ideal sunlight location, not everywhere on Earth will always see the lunar X every month. But if you can, just about right around the first quarter, uh, which is about a seven day old moon, start looking for the lunar X right here. It's formed by the ridges. The uh, borders of four different craters. Work or not? Let's see. There's the astronomy picture of the day. And there's the lunar X. There we go. Okay, and this has the details. Uh, astronomy picture of the day for March uh, 1st, 2018. You can find this on the NASA website or APOD website and it shows the lunar X. And if you're real lucky, you might even see the lunar V. That's not quite as obvious as the lunar X. And this explains this sharp image, image of the lunar X was captured uh, and how it was captured. Just the, the an artifact of sunlight on the moon. Okay. Also on that sketch, it shows some of the lunar probes. Luna 2 is a Russian probe. Oops, back up. Let's go back up there. Luna 2 was the first object to hit the moon. Crash landed on the moon. Uh, Number two, I know of the hold on. 1959. Yeah, I'm looking for it. Oh, it's center line north, center line north. Yeah, there it is, right there. Luna Luna 2, the first object to contact the moon, crash landed on the moon. Now uh, the Ranger series of satellites that NASA sent up there were sent to observe the moon and take pictures and map the moon to plan landing sites for the Apollo uh, astronauts. The land, the road, Ranger 7 is right here below what's called the Framaro Highlands. 
Ranger 7. It also crash landed. All the Rangers crash landed on the moon before, but they took many pictures as they went in. Luna 9, another Russian probe, was the first object to soft land on the moon, 1966. And of course, we've got the Apollo missions. Apollo 11 landed in Sea of Tranquility. Apollo 12 landed in the Fromaro Islands. Apollo 13, of course, didn't land. Apollo 14 also landed in the Fromaro Highlands, just a hop, skip, and a jump from where Ranger 7 impacted. Apollo 14, I'm sorry, Apollo 15 was up here in the highlands between Mari Serenitatis and Mari Imbrium. Apollo 16 was down here. Apollo 17 was the last mission, manned mission to the moon up here between the Sea of Tranquility and the Sea of Serenity in the highlands there. So those are the lunar probes that are sketched on this sketch. Uh, the Alpine Valley shows up as A. The Alps Mountain shows up as B. The Altai Scarp is E. It's this long skinny line down here. The Apennine Mountains, I pointed those out earlier, F. The Carpathian Mountains over here, G. The Caucasus Mountains over here. And uh, the lesser known, the Hamas Mountains in this area. The Jura Mountains are to the north of the Bay of Rainbows, Sinus Iridum. The Pyrenees Mountains are uh, N down here around Mare Nectaris. The Rita Valley, that's an interesting object to see in the telescope. It's hard to see, but it's satisfying when you can see it. Uh, the Rephaeus Mountains uh, is letter S uh, right over here, Rephaeus Mountains. Spitsbergen is a peak in the middle of Mare Imbrium. Straight Range is uh, W up here in Mare Imbrium. The straight wall is another feature that you only see when the terminator is in the correct position and the, the shadow is cast in this direction. Also, you can see it sometimes when the terminator, when the moon is in its waning phase, instead of being a dark line, it shows up as a white line. That's the straight wall. And the Taurus Mountains are. Um, <coughs> Letter Y, the Taurus Mountains are in this area, and the Tenerife Mountains up here. So let me click on that. You can see Spitsbergen. There's Spitsbergen. It's a peak right in the middle. The straight, uh, the straight range and the Taurus Mountains, the Alps and the Alpine Valley, and so forth. A couple other things that are on here. The LS stands for Locus Somniorum. Uh, M is Mare. L is Lake or Locus, there's the Latin term. Locus Somniorum is the Lake of Sleep. And uh, Sinus is Bay. This is Sinus Iridum. This is Sinus Estuum. The, uh, the Bay of Dew, or the Bay of Billows. This is Sinus Rorus, the Bay of Dew. SM Sinus Medii is the Central Bay. Oh, let's see, what else? And you can see them here. Sinus Rorus. Oh, that's right. I forgot I had this slide. Okay, Mari Chrysium. All right, Christian. You saw that already. Sea of Crises. Mari Fecunda Tatus, Sea of Frank, uh, uh, Fertility. 
Mari Nectaris, the Sea of Tranquility, uh, Nect yeah, Sea of Nectar. MT, Mari Tranquilitatis, the Sea of Tranquility. MS, Mari Serenitatis, the Sea of Serenity. MV, Mari Vaporum, the Sea of Vapors. MI, Mari, doesn't stand for Michigan. That's Mari Imbrium, the Sea of uh, Rains. Mari Nubium, the Sea of Clouds. Mari Humorum, the Sea of Moisture. Sinus Iridum, the Bay of Rainbows. Sinus Roris, the Bay of Dew. Sinus Estuum, the Bay of Billows. Sinus Medii, Central Bay. LS, Locus Somniorum, the Lake of Sleep. And I added this one, LM, Locus Mortis, the bay, the lake of the dead, and Oceanus Prosolarum. And here's the lake of the dead right there. Locus Mortis. And there's another one. It's on the Polis means marsh or swamp. PP is the Polis putridinus, the marsh of decay, the putrid swamp, right in this area. So, quiz time. <laughs> Here we go. You should all be experts on the moon now. Where is Mari Frigoris? Uh, top. It's up in the north. Mari Imbrium, the Sea of Rains. Where is it? It's that big one. Yeah. Sinus Iridum, the Bay of Rainbows. There it is. Mari Vaporum, the Sea of Vapors. Where's that? Right in the middle. That's uh, the lady's eye. The woman in the moon's eye, Mari Vaporum. Mari Cognitum, the known sea. It's down there. Of course, Oceanus Prosolarum, you can't miss that. Where's that? Off to the east, west, what? Don't hear anybody. I missed it. Left, left. Left, Oceanus Procellarum on the left or the west. Mari Insularum, the Sea of Isles, Islands. It's in there just between uh, Copernicus and Aristarchus and Kepler, right in the middle between the three of them. Mari Oriental, we can't see it. And it's there on the other side, sort of hidden. Mari Humorum, the Sea of Moisture. Where's that? There. Mari Nubium. It does look like it's sort of got clouds in it. Where is that? <clears throat> right there. Mari Fecunditatus, the Sea of Fertility. I'm sorry, I skipped Mari Nectaris. There's Mari Nectaris, the Sea of Nectar. Okay, where's Mari Fecunditatus? Right. Lower, lower, right. On the right. Mari Tranquilitatis, the Sea of Tranquility. Oh, just above it. Mari right. Serenitatis, the Sea of Serenity. A little higher up. Mari Chrysium, the Sea of Crises. There we go. Okay, your quiz isn't over yet. How about the Alps? <laughs> Where's the Alps? In Switzerland. Yeah, in the north there. And the Alpine Valley is where? Got to be in the Alps, right? There it is. You can't see it very well in this image, but it's easier to see when it's uh, when there's a Terminator. Okay, the Caucasus Mountains, where are they? They're off to the east of the Alps, southeast of the Alps. And the Caucasus, the Apennines, and the Carpathians all sort of surround Mari Imbrium. The Apennines, the Carpathians, it's sort of hard to see, but they're north of Plato.
speaking of not Plato, Copernicus. Speaking of Plato, where's that crater? Plato crater, where is it? Yeah, it's up at the top. Oh, it's up at the top. Right there. Plato oh, is just above right. the Sea of Rains. Okay, how about Archimedes? Where's that? It's in the Sea of Rains. Right there, that big one. Aristarchus. It's just above Archimedes. Oh, sorry, just to, just to the left of, or the west of northwest of Copernicus. And Copernicus, of course, is that big bright one there. And where's Kepler? In between the two. In between the two. Grimaldi, where's that one? Oh, by itself. Gassendi, which I often have referred to as the ruined crater. I'm not, that's not original with me. Clavius, down in the south, it's got that. You can see that some of the little craters one, two, three, four, five, there's at least six in a, almost a semicircle. Looks like something hit it and then skipped boom, 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 boom on the floor of Clavius. And Tycho, which if you look at the full moon, it looks like the navel of a navel orange. Okay. Some of you did okay in that quiz. <laughs> so now you are officially a lunatic. <laughs> yes, sir. May I, may I digress just a couple seconds? Sure. Um, it says we only see the same side of the moon. Am I correct? That's correct. And then it says the moon rotates on its axis. True. I, I can't get in my head how we can be looking at the same side of the moon if the moon is rotated on its axis. Because its rotation on its axis is the same as its re revolution around the Earth. So uh, I can demonstrate that with. Uh, Bob over here. Come over here, Bob. You're going to be the sun. Okay, I'll be the sun. Okay. I'm not your sun. No, no <laughs> definitely not. And I'm the moon. This is the side that faces He's the earth. Gosh. Okay. And so I'm rotating like this, but I'm also going around the earth. I'm wobbling. <laughs> <laughs> you get it? So when, that's you're saying. When you get back to that original point, that's when I can see the moon again. Well, you can see the moon if you're on the dark. Okay. Oh, you want me to the earth? You started the turning, but then you stopped. And you just, no, 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 no. I'm turning. turning. I'm turning oh, like this. Sorry. I'm turning. Okay. I'm you facing will, that way. You will be yeah. the earth. Of the moon. Seven days later, I'm facing that way. And in the night side, you're seeing first quarter, half moon. Seven days later, I'm all lit up. Peter, I'm Jeff, forward, you're right. you're <laughs> the Earth spins though. Well, I'm, 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 am I the Sun or the Earth? Maybe <laughs> the Earth. Okay, okay. I'm seven times. So, so, I'm spinning. I'm spinning. <laughs> I started out looking in that direction. I made, I've made half. I made half <laughs> rotation right now. Right? I've made half rotation. I'm looking in that direction. I've, I've turned 180 degrees. There's so much oh, no. so 270 degrees. Yeah, 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 go ahead. You be the earth, right? I'll be on Okay, he's the earth, right? <laughs> he's the earth. He's rotating once on its axis every 24 hours. Right. I'm the moon. I'm rotating, rotating once on my axis every 29 and a half days. Okay. As I'm merrily going around, you go that direction. Well, yeah. I'm moving that direction. I was standing on my head. Uh, okay. I'm merely going around and I'm rotating at 29 and a half days. When I get a quarter way around, I'm uh, which is a little over seven days, mm -hmm. I've actually rotated a quarter to my degrees around from over here. So I may rotate a quarter from here to here because I'm rotating on my axis the same amount of time as uh, I'm spinning I'm around, around. And, and as I go around again at a half, right now I've rotated. Uh, 270 degrees. 270 degrees, or uh, no, no, 180, 180, 180. 180. Okay, 180 degrees. Well, that's like <laughs> <laughs> I've rotated 180 degrees 
but I'm only 14 and something like three quarters of a day in my rotation, which I'm, I'm rotating around my axis. I'm, uh, once every uh, 29 days, I've rotated one halfway around on my axis, but I'm on the other side of the uh, position of the earth than I was before. Now, if I go another 270, another like uh, 21 days, I'm also rotating again another quarter of the way around for my rotation. So I'm now about 21 degrees and 21 days around. 21 degrees. No, so good. So 270, 270, 270 degrees. degrees 21 days on my axis and 21 days around the orbit. And the reason why it's gravitationally locked is basically the same reason what you see me right now. I've got a center of mass that's more toward the earth. Than the <laughs> okay. Does that help? Rotating and moving at the same time. Yeah. He's rotating and moving Different around his direction. axis. He's See how he's rotating around his axis? Yeah. yeah. But he's also moving. Okay, I'm sorry, you guys. I hard to understand. You know, yeah. Zoom land couldn't see that. Think of the Earth just so spinning in the center. Never about the Earth just spinning. Uh, he's revolves around the Earth. So you're officially a lunatic. You are now prepared for International Observe the Moon Night. Friday through Sunday, the 15th and 15th and 17th of October at ODU, 43rd Street. The public is supposed to come from 6 to 9 p.m. We need to set up by 5 o'clock, even uh, earlier to get a parking place. George, George, speaking we're talking, we need to go through that again. What? Everything you said. Everything you said. Everything you said. Everything you said. <laughs> okay, back up. There you go. Attention, attention. You are now officially a lunatic. You're prepared for International Observe the Moon Night, which is coming up next weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, the 15th through the 17th of October in the 43rd Street area of ODU. The public is invited from 6 to 9. We should be there at least an hour earlier than that to find a place to park and park, set up our, our telescopes. Any questions? Sir, I don't know if this is a question, but the 16th, isn't that the ODU's homecoming night? Yes, the 16th is homecoming for ODU. So you might want to, uh, you might have a little trouble finding a place to park. You might want to go a little earlier. Now, the game is scheduled till about, about 6.30. So it's going to be about the same time we're setting up. So, or I know you know from here. Justin about this. He said that uh, hopefully tomorrow we're going to hear if they're going to allow us to drop our equipment at the corner. Do you have a, a image of the? Yeah, here's the image. I, I think we can get it to project. Let me see. Project right here. We're right. supposed to set up at the corner of 43rd and Hampton Boulevard, which is. Uh, on the sidewalk outside the Ted Constable Center. <clears throat> I think he's, he's trying to pick, take a picture up so the Zoom people can see it. Well, you can tell them what they want. Leah, what do you make the uh, document camera do? Oh, um, so the different one that I've got. I don't typically teach in this one, but I like, um, I've never seen this usually, one. Oh, this is a different one. Oh, so usually there's a. Um, I did it. I selected it, but I, I, I don't think it's all. So I don't use this kind of doc cam. Uh, that's George. He's one of the more than honors. Let's Chesapeake Planetarium. Chesapeake Planetarium. Yeah. 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 I'm going to see if I can get some more to bring to the event. Water. Yeah. Anyway, we're waiting to hear from the police if they're going to let us. Pull up temporarily. If you guys are planning on coming, you will basically have time to unload your vehicle at the corner, is what I told them, because we can't park on the sidewalk. There's not enough room for all of us. Okay, so I've told them that uh, I can give them an hour window before the event, which is supposed to be from six to nine, is what we're supposed to be set up. 
So from five to six is when you would be allowed to park. And hopefully the police will give us permission to do this or unload your equipment and then go park your vehicle in the garage. Where now? The nearest park is right across the street. Next to the Barry Art Museum is a parking garage. And it is not the closest parking garage to the football stadium. So is it going to be full? I have no idea. But the parking is free. I did find that out for you. <laughs> Not any no, no. There's no reserve. They can't because of homecoming. Yeah, can't reserve. Can we hold this in front of the camera? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's a good idea. You do that. Wow. Why didn't I think of that? Okay, just a minute. Let me see if I can get it back. Let me be able to see it. Yeah, if it's going to be observed, the clouds night. Let's move further to the left. Yeah, you're getting close now. Out of focus. The sky watchers will be out there with us. I don't know how many members are going to but they will be out there. They'll stand there. They were playing on Saturday. They were saying that this year was a long day. They were planning on Saturday. Pictures. Can't get it to. Can't display. There we are. You'll make the you'll make the uh no no call about what time that's 43rd Street and Hampton uh, Boulevard. You might have to point to it. Where the uh the orange circle is. That's the that's the uh, baseball basketball basketball uh arena. And this is the Barry Art Museum. And here's the 43rd Street. 43rd Street is here. They're supposed to have a moon su supported between the buildings. And we're supposed to set up on the corner of 43rd Street and uh, Hampton Boulevard. Okay, I got a question out here in uh, Zoom land. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay, uh, with that map, if you want to show it again, the TED Center, right across the street, there's a parking lot. Um, you pull back a little bit, just a little bit. There you go. There you go. Look. Okay, you see the parking lot? That's right across the street. Here? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. So we're going to be able to park in there. That's what he was just said. I guess we should have. Uh, Google Map. We should have just used our resources. <laughs> I've already yeah. put it on here. <laughs> I think this is the I've never seen directions. I've never seen that. 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 I've
Uh, the other question that was asked at Sky Watchers is, is there elevators in that parking lot? Well, and the answer we got there was yes, two of them. Well, I think there is elevators. There's supposed to be two elevators in that, what I heard last night from Sky Watchers. So you don't have to worry about carrying your stuff up and down steps. No. Well, you should be able to unload and then park. You have to get there later. You, oh. What I talked to Justin about was right where my mouse is right there. Yeah, that's where I want to unload your vehicle. Or I'm going to show up early and I'm going to bring my cart. So if you don't have a cart, I'll help you unload your vehicle because he said it's that location or somewhere around the corner. If you've been here before, look at where the corner is because he didn't specify what corner. <laughs> where, where? So it's a block away at least. I mean, no one wants to carry that gear, their gear that far. Where is the moon actually going to be set up? You have that idea? So that's where, across 43rd the moon, Street. The moon is going to be right where my mouse is about. Okay. And it's going to be suspended between the, what do they call it now, the Chartway Arena uh -huh. and the garage, the parking garage. All right. And they'll have vendors and so everything down 43rd Street here. There's supposed to be a band like playing near us. I'll bring my car too. I'll make it interesting trying to explain things. Did you guys see everything I'm talking about, Joe? Do you see the mouse moving and stuff? Yes, I do. Um, my <laughs> other question would be after the event, are we going to be allowed to bring our vehicle in to reload our stuff back up? Yeah, after the event, it's probably going to be easier because a lot of the people are wrapping up at eight. And I told them that we're self sufficient. We don't need their staff to help us set up. We don't need anything from them, really, except the spot to set up our equipment. So if you guys need something in particular, let me know and I can talk to him. I could email Justin and let him know and he might be able to get it. But I just like every other band we go to, everybody's pretty self-sufficient. So I didn't say we needed anything. I just hope the band isn't so loud we can't be heard when we're explaining things to the people. Absolutely. Yeah, we're going to compete with a band. <laughs> um, that brings up other concerns. This is, uh, well, Saturday night's homecoming night. There's going to be a lot of measures at the game. And uh, we're expecting a big crowd here with the band around and everything else. Uh, we might have some issues with crowd control and a little bit of rowdiness with drinking. And that might be a concern. Are we ha are looking at anything for as far as directing people or anything like that? Or are we going to let the Girl Scouts uh, uh, handle that? Yeah, <laughs> <going out there. laughs> well, I'm assuming there's going to be a fairly significant police presence there because they are expecting a lot of people okay that's one of the concerns because there's a you know i said i didn't know about the band and that had something even else to it you know yeah the whole 43rd street is going to be blocked off and things are going to be set up somewhere at the end next to hampton boulevard is a band i was told on 43rd street how close to Fort hampton boulevard i don't know which is part of why they're saying Maybe you guys can pull up there and park because the band might be all the way at the crosswalk that you see in the image. Oh, I hope not. Yeah. Yeah. Like I said, I was hoping to know this information already. I mean, it's a week away, but uh, Justin emailed me today. He said that hopefully he'll find out tomorrow. As soon as I know, I'm going to put it out and uh, I'll put it on the group thing and I'll put it on the group's IO site too. Just so you guys know, I'll probably send everybody a message. And I'll forward everything to Skywatch. I, I actually been emailing uh, the right. president, right? Yeah, too. But, um, yeah. No matter what. Sure. Go ahead, Joe. Um, what about if we moved our location to the opposite corner in front of the arena, away from the band? You're talking about we're still on Hampton, Hampton Boulevard there? Like 45th and Hampton Boulevard. The reason why is because everything is, they want us down here where the globe is, near the globe. I, nothing's going on at 45th Street. I see. Okay. Initially, I was told that, uh, what is it called, Monarch Way on the backside of the stadium? was going to be blocked off too, but I don't know if that one's going to be anymore. 43rd Street definitely is. I was told this corner or the one at Monarch Way, and if you 
I actually drove over there like uh, late at night to see what the sky looked like. And at Monarch Way, the buildings that are just south of the uh, intersection there are too tall to allow you to view any good portion of the sky in the direction we, we need to look. Now, Jeff, you have the club's uh, solar telescope, right? Can you repeat that? I said you have the club uh, solar telescope? Yes, I do. Okay, make sure you bring it because the sun will be up. We should be able to see Venus, but the view to the west is pretty good. Okay, yeah, I see that the west will be right down the 43rd Street. So yeah. maybe it will set right up in the middle of the street. Maybe. I'm hoping that we can see uh, the sun before it sets, see Venus, obviously see Jupiter and Saturn, because if I remember right, on the 15th, the moon is coming up around five something, and then it gets progressively later. Yeah, it's, like I said, it's going to be um, three quarters, or uh, so we should have an excellent view of the moon, provided clear skies, of course. And we're going to need to look at something until the moon is above the parking garage. So the planets will be above it. You know, once the, the sun sets, you'll be able to see Jupiter and Saturn. But uh, just because the moon's coming up at like, I don't know what time it is, 520 or something like that, you will not see it for at least another hour because the parking garage is right there. I mean, you can really see from that image there. You gotta give it time to get above the buildings, but this is the best location of the two. Yeah. So you can show the planets. And we've done we've done events in worse locations. So this will be sufficient. And it's the moon. So any of you we can show people the night sky. We're gonna like it because most people will not look through a telescope at the night sky then. Anyway. So even if it's cloudy, if it's a hazy cloud. The club will be there telling me already. If it is pouring rain, we won't be there. Okay. <laughs> if it is a rain cloud, though, and it's going to clear, we will still be there. <laughs> but now, whether or not you guys want to come, that's up to you. But we don't cancel really unless it is the whole area. When you look on the weather map, and if you see a thunderstorm over the whole region, we will cancel probably for that. But we have shown up on the boardwalk when it was pouring, and then like an hour later, you were set up and ready to go. So we try not to cancel for anything. Just giving you all a heads up. Any other questions about this location? I close the map. Uh, I got a question. Um, suggested parking places. Did you go over that? The you see where the mouse is right here on the bottom of the screen? Your head's in the way. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. That is the closest parking garage. I will post. Just to send me a map of all the parking uh, locations that we're allowed to park there. I'll send it to you. Like, if you go down, down 43rd, 43rd Street, Street, there's we another were, parking garage. Yeah, we were over here because the planetarium, the new planetarium they just built is like right here. So there's a parking garage here, but no one wants to probably walk that far. Mm -hmm. You know, they don't have to. I don't know what the parking situation is going to be like inside this parking garage on 43rd Street. But it may not be good because it's homecoming. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, showing up early, they're only going to let us drop our equipment off in a certain window. Okay, so if you showed up two hours early, it doesn't mean you're going to be able to set up your telescope then. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So hopefully, I'll know more tomorrow. I've been I've been emailing like I cc'd all the club officers on the last email I sent to them about it. But hopefully we get the rest of the information. I'll definitely put it out. As soon as they email me, literally I'm sending it to you all of y'all. So, but I know that they want us there. It's going to be, we're going to make it work. Uh, no matter what, we'll make it work. Can't be, we've been in worse locations, I know that. And it's really a good view of the sky once the, Objects get above the parking garage at the Barry Art Museum. Because the Barry Art Museum is just directly south of the setup location. It'll be a good. One other thing, NASA Skywatcher, or not NASA Skywatcher, NASA itself is going to have an exhibit inside the museum. Yeah, there's going to be multiple NASA mm -hmm. exhibits that are really. We've got one set up for kids, like a, a 
some type of learning exercise they're going to be doing. It's going to be a big wolf season. Yeah, they're expecting thousands of people. Like, if you guys have been to club long enough where you went to Mount Trash Form back when we used to do that, this will be the equivalent of those type of crowds where you have 50 people lined up in your telescope to show up. And every telescope has 50 people. So, you can hopefully, you don't need to remember everything George told you. Just remember like a couple things, you'll be good. <laughs> Stop sharing. Stop sharing. Stop sharing. If I don't get overwhelmed, I will bring my. Thing too. Yeah, and whether or not you use it is up to you. If it looks like it's too many people, you don't have to do it. Uh, it yeah. But then there'll be like a revolution. <laughs> Any other questions about anything now? Yeah, uh, Sean, t shirts. Do we get more t shirts? George and I, I think we're going to. Look for a lot we're just talking about that. I think we're going to order some more because we sold all the t-shirts. We ordered seven or eight extra and they're gone. I have two, two XL. So if you have one, wear it. Yeah. But uh, I will order some more. Yeah, I've got three. I'm just, I'm just looking for a lot. If you want to borrow one, I've got three or four. <laughs> and actually, I was going to talk about this. Usually in the past years, the club ordered this book. If we get 10 people that want to submit an order, we get a better deal. We're going to do that this year because the Astronomical League, you get the same deal if you go through them. And they, the likelihood of them having at least 10 people is very good. And that'll cost like $24. $24, $25. Yeah, so if you guys want it, go through the Astronomical League, get the good deal price, make sure you get the discounted price on it. And one other thing is, because of, uh, I was just talking about Mount Trashmore. When we stopped doing Mount Trashmore in 2015, I think it was, because there was a shooting and then the city got a bunch of lawyers involved with all these restrictions on the club and we had to provide like security and things that cost too much money for a million dollar insurance yeah. policy. So that's why we don't do events there anymore. But because of that, we do stuff every month for the city of Chester, but we don't do monthly events for Norfolk, Portsmouth, and something's kind of far, but it's still good. There's some good stuff out there that we've done, but I want to reach out to those cities to see if they want us to start doing events because the International Astronomy uh, Day that we used to do at Virginia Beach Library, we don't do it no more because they wanted to impose those same restrictions on us and we still want to do those events though. We just got to pick a different location, but I need to make sure that everybody, if you're able to do something, and let's say you live in Portsmouth, I need people to try to step up and like head up that event. Because I won't, I don't want to reach out to the city of Portsmouth or Norfolk and tell them we want to volunteer for an event. And I'm sending George to his 28th event of the month, you know, because he goes to almost every event. There's there's a core group that is at all a lot of the events, but if you could let me know if you're able to do one event a month, you know, then I can let Norfolk know, hey, we can come set up like at a waterfront park, something like that, because you could see something on a certain nights, even if it's the moon. There's a lot of people that want to see the moon. So if you guys are interested in doing something like that, let me know. I'm just curious, because um, I'm a member. Are, are we allowed at all, or is have we thought ever about um, the top floor of the Edgar Casey Center where they have that bell? Oh, yeah, that's uh, it's a cool place. Yeah, have you ever thought about where's that at? The Edgar Casey Center, it's like right on the um, area. Are you talking about where the uh, restaurant is? Like, yeah, oh. there's a really cool area that's like big. I've never been there. <laughs> I've never been there. Yeah. I've lived in Michigan. If you be 40, 40, 41 years there. Like, like this glass, and it goes out into a huge deck, and it goes like it's just the it's, ocean is like it's beautiful. That might be a that good place to set up. And it wouldn't oh, be the yeah. city, it would be within the city. I could ask. I mean, I'm, I'm not a like here. Yeah. That sounds good to me. Yeah. I mean, I we have gone everywhere. Like, School starting up, George will be going to the school system. I don't want to, it's not that George, George has not told me that he doesn't want to go. 
I don't want to overtax George. So we go into all these different events. I don't want to volunteer the club and only have 10 people that I know may show up, you know. So if there's enough people that are saying, yeah, I can go to one event, you know, a month or something like that, that would really help out because there, trust me, there are schools, we go to two to three schools a month. And then you have the monthly events that we're normally doing. And then you have bus, special things that are come major up bus, now. Family parties, things like that. We get invited to a, a birthday party to set up for a whole bunch of kids. I've done that many times. Yeah. And I'm like an amateur, amateur right You probably know more than the person that you're going to show. Exactly. <laughs> you don't ever be dissuaded by that because you know more than most people. And even if you don't, it's fine. I've got little kids that knew more about what we were looking at. And it's like, that's awesome. You tell me about it. <laughs> As you're looking through the telescope, there's nothing to be ashamed of. We're all learning. So the main thing is, if you have a telescope, especially, and as we get donations all the time, I just got another email. We're not going to get this telescope because they're in California. And they thought we were going to come pick it up. But we're not. <laughs> but we get them all the time. And so if you don't have a telescope, let me know. I'll put your name on the list. And the next time we get a telescope, I'll get it to you. Because we do get them quite often. Sean, I got something. Yeah. Um, Chuck, um, the former Chuck Yago, used to do Halloween and set up a telescope for yep. Halloween trick-or-treaters. Not a bad idea. I've done it once. And I think it's a good idea, uh, if you're not doing anything, to set a telescope and have the trick-or-treaters look Stuff too. I do the same thing every year. And even like last year with the pandemic, what I did was I put the camera in my telescope and then put a monitor right at the edge of the street on yeah. a table. So you didn't have to come near me and you can still see the moon. So, and in fact, I'll probably bring that to the international moon night because it's mm -hmm. a lot of people can see it once. Mm -hmm. So if you have the ability to do that and you want to go to this event, when you have so many people like this, that's the way to do it. And then they don't need to come near you either, which has extra benefits even when it wasn't a pandemic. Because little kids like to have chocolate on their hands and touch your toes. <laughs> yeah, we love it. <laughs> that's quite, quite a common occurrence on the boardwalk. And just so you guys know, we did end up too with uh, three events complete at the boardwalk that we'll get uh, some money for our scholarship fund. So that's good. We only had to cancel one time for weather, and the first event was canceled because the city that wasn't sure they're going to do it. So it worked out good for us. And every time we do Skywatch, too, we do get a, uh, I think it's like $25 from the city of Chesapeake and Saturday, Sunday. So if you guys want to volunteer for those events, it does matter. Because that those two re, uh, things I just said are how we fund those two scholarships that uh, Ben was talking about. And we give away a lot of money. For our scholarship. So, come springtime, we'll be uh, making some senior graduating very happy. So, you guys have anything else? I think I covered everything. I forgot that was new business there. All right. Thank you for coming, and that'll be the end of the meeting. We still have handouts up here for anybody who didn't get on the paper. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Go ahead and look. This is, this is a uh, Moon globe. Oh.